This is AutoLine Daily, the show dedicated to enthusiasts of the global automotive industry. More than a year ago, Volkswagen launched its Trinity project, which is an all-out effort to catch up to Tesla on a number of fronts, including software. The electric vehicles developed as part of the project will be based on the company's new SSP platform, and VW planned to build the models at a new 2 billion euro plant in Wolfsburg, Germany, starting in 2026. But Reuters reports that CEO Oliver Bloom is reviewing plans to build that plant and could push it back until 2030. The automaker still plans to launch models based on the SSP platform, but it may build them at its main factory in Wolfsburg instead. VW is facing pressure to ramp up EV production, but this shows how tough it is for legacy automakers. To help accelerate its autonomous driving efforts, Stellantis is acquiring AI Motive, a company based in Hungary that's developing artificial intelligence and autonomous driving software. The financial details were not revealed. The acquisition, though, is part of the automaker's goal to generate around 20 billion euros in revenue a year from software-enabled products and subscriptions. Jaguar Land Rover CEO Terry Bellore is resigning from the company at the end of the year due to, quote, personal reasons. Bellore became CEO of JLR in 2020 after previously holding the same position at Renault. Adrian Mardell, who has worked at the company for 32 years and is a member of the board, will take over on an interim basis. Genesis is sharing details about the solar roof that's available on the electric version of the G80 in Europe. The panel can add around 1,000 kilometers, or 715 miles of range a year, based on an average of six hours of sunlight a day. That only works out to three kilometers, or just under two miles a day. The solar roof is also able to charge the car's 12-volt battery, providing extra power for things like air conditioning. The electric G80 has a starting price of £65,000 in the UK, or about $76,600, and the solar panel roof costs an additional £1,360, or $1,600. And speaking of, the all-new Prius, the Prius Prime, the plug-in hybrid version, will also have a solar roof. Toyota says it will use the system to provide energy to the battery while it's stationary, and to assist things like the HVAC system when it's in motion. At Scheffler, we pioneer motion. Electrifying mobility. Manufacturing smarter. Reducing CO2 emissions. Making energy production clean. Scheffler pioneers motion to advance how the world moves. The electric version of the Fiat 500 is making a comeback in North America. The model has been absent from the U.S. market since 2019, but in 2020, Fiat launched an all-new version of the electric 500, which is called the 500E for Europe. And now that model will go on sale in North America in the first quarter of 2024. Fiat didn't reveal any specs for the U.S. version, but over in Europe, the 500E is available with a 42 kilowatt hour lithium ion battery pack, which provides a range of 320 kilometers based on the WLTP test cycle. That's just under 200 miles. But if it offers the same setup, that number will be lower in the EPA test, but it could be some time before we learn the details. The North American 500E won't make its official debut until next year's LA Auto Show. But speaking of this year's LA reveals, Toyota is giving us a hint of what its future all-electric BZ lineup could look like. The BZ compact SUV concept has a similar hard edge styling like the BZ4X, but to us, the design also appears more flowy, without the blocky cladding slapped on over the wheel arches and smoother sections over the tops of the fenders. We told you yesterday that the all-new Prius would likely fit in with Toyota's future EVs, 
and you can certainly see the family resemblance in the front end treatment, especially the lighting. While the interior still looks very much like a concept to me, its style is very spartan with only a few visible controls and a large thick bar that wraps around the dash and onto the doors. It's also highlighted by a rectangular steering wheel and two curved display screens, but they're not curved like you'd expect. They curve up from the bottom like someone glued the end down and then tried to pull them up. You know, it's a little bit of a sad day for sports car enthusiasts. The Acura NSX is no more. Number 350 of 350 rolled off the assembly line yesterday. The iconic car made its comeback in 2016 as a hybrid supercar, but its place on the factory floor is being swapped for a limited run of the TLX Type S. However, we shouldn't shed too many tears. There's strong rumors the NSX will return as a BEV. Fisker's all-electric Ocean SUV has officially started production. The model is being built in Austria by the supplier Magna. More than 300 will be produced in the first quarter of 2023. That will increase to 8,000 in Q2, then 15,000 in the third quarter, and by Q4 of next year, a total of 42,400 will be built. Fisker has received 63,000 reservations for the Ocean, and two trim levels are sold out in the U.S. for 2023. It took a little over two years to develop the EV, which contains more than 50 kilos, or about 110 pounds of recycled and biodegradable materials. The top trim features a 350-mile range and has a starting price of just under $69,000. We want to know what drives your testing. OTA, connected car, diagnostics, remote testing, Intrepid Control Systems is here to help you work from anywhere. Intrepid Control Systems, driven by your data. Waymo famously uses a fleet of Chrysler Pacificas and Jaguar I-Paces for its autonomous ride-hailing services. But eventually, it's going to incorporate its own purpose-built AVs. Well, I really shouldn't say its own. About a year ago, it announced a partnership with Geely's premium EV brand Zeker to develop an autonomous taxi, and now that vehicle is making its debut. It looks like a futuristic minivan. It's built on Zeker's SCAM platform and features sensor packages from Waymo on the roof, corners, and bumpers of the vehicle. To make it easier for passengers to get in and out, both the front and rear doors slide out and away from each other. But once they are inside, it might look a little weird with no steering wheel or pedals. Zeker will also get its own version of the vehicle, called the M-Vision, which is said to offer both a version with a steering wheel and one without. While we don't know when Waymo will start incorporating the vehicle into its fleet, the M-Vision is supposed to go into production in 2024. Back in 2012, a couple of entrepreneurs in Austin, Texas, started a car rental service using only silver Audi A4s. They called the company Silver Car. It was successful enough that Audi bought the company in 2017 and called it Silver Car by Audi. Now it's changing the name to Audi On Demand and is adding the e-tron sport back to the fleet. There are 38 Audi dealers in the U.S. that offer the service and more are on the way. Audi On Demand is also offering long-term rentals up to a year. And that sure sounds like a subscription service to us. So maybe this new mobility model has a chance of catching on where subscription services really haven't. And be sure to join us for AutoLine After Hours this afternoon. Our special guest for the show is Martin Fisher, a member of the Board of Management at the supplier ZF. Also joining John and Gary is Lindsay Brook from SAE. It'll be a fun show and it all kicks off at 3 p.m. Eastern Time on our website or on our YouTube channel. That brings us to the end of today's show. Thank you for tuning in.
Auto Line Daily is brought to you by Bridgestone, solutions for your journey. Intrepid Control Systems, over-the-air engineering, boost your game. And by Scheffler, we pioneer motion.